I've shared this before. It was last fall, and I was with my uncle and aunt in, in Raleigh. They had come up for a football game, and I got to see them. And it is with a lot of nervousness, nerves today that I share with you because it means so much to you. And I don't know how it's going to affect you. So I've prayed for you today as you hear what I have to say. And uh, it's hard to hear. And it was hard for me to work through it. Y'all know that um, my dad, Redmond, was killed four years ago, last February. It was sudden and it was tragic, something we didn't ask for, something we didn't want. And um, one year later, I would have never guessed that I would be in South America. I was... Um, I was um, in training for a week in Peru, getting ready to go down to Brazil. I was in Brazil for five months as a student missionary. And um, while I was in Peru, it was, it was marked the one year anniversary. And um, while I was in Brazil, God did a lot of amazing things in my life and taught me a lot of great things and used me and my team and to affect the lives of people that we met and worked with. While I was there, um, Osama bin Laden was assassinated, and we had found out late in the night, and we were watching Brazilian news sources as the news broke. And um, growing up in a post 9/11 culture, uh, I just I'd grown up to really hate Muslims, and I had a lot of friends that went off to war to Iraq and Afghanistan that I graduated high school with and and gone to church with, and you know as much as a Christian would like to say or that we think we are allowed to, I hated Muslims, and I glory, took glory <coughs> in their death. And uh, I would try to back myself up with scripture, and uh, really wrestled with how to um, mark the death of Osama bin Laden. And should I, should I glory and celebrate in this that our enemy is dead, or grieve for a man who does not know Christ and is spending eternity in hell, does he deserve it? Yes. Do we deserve it? Yes. By grace, I've come this far. Amen. God said that he does not rejoice that any man should be destroyed. As I wrestled with that and, uh, and over many months and, and a couple of years, I was challenged with scripture, first of all, and I went to the Lord's Prayer. And that's saying, you don't have to, if you want to turn there, if you have a Bible, you can. I don't expect you to, but it's in Matthew chapter 6. And in the prayer, he said at the very end of the model prayer, it says, Forgive us of our debts, as we also forgive those who have debts against us. And in verse, after the prayer, verse 14, chapter 6 of Matthew, Jesus says this, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men of their sins, your Heavenly Father will not forgive you of yours. So I wasn't contemplating the sin of Osama bin Laden. I was contemplating the sin of a man who took my father. I was weighed against James chapter 2, verse 10. It says that if we, we keep the whole law, if we keep the whole law and break just one commandment, we're guilty of it all. 
people often look at missionaries and say they're a super Christian, which I hope you get that out of your mind today. Because I, like Paul, I often think that I'm the worst. I'm the chief of sinners. That God has had to reach down his hand and forgive me. But the truth is that if, I, if I'm on a scale, a balance, and here's my sin, and here's the sin of a man who took the life of my father, one is not heavier than the other. It's equal. And Christ came down to die for his sin against me and my family, and against God, and he died for my sin against everyone that I sin against. And he takes it. He says, I forgive you if you ask for forgiveness. That's all you got to do is ask. you got to humble yourself and say, God, I've messed up. Forgive me. But I was challenged with that verse I just read that if I can't forgive the people that sin against me, that God will not forgive me of my sins against him. And over the course of two years and reading a lot of scripture and praying, I came, I've come to forgive the man who took my daddy's life. And I know that may anger some of you and confuse you. And I know it doesn't make sense, but I know it's right. I don't know that man. I don't know what he looks like. I don't know what his childhood was like. I don't know what his relationship with the Lord, if any, was like. And I don't need to know. God knows. Amen. And I don't pretend to believe that he's in one place or the other. I do know he is in one of them. But I know that it's up to me and it's up to us who've been hurt by him to forgive him. Because our Heavenly Father says that if we can't, then He can't forgive us. It's not by anything that we do. My, at my dad's funeral, the gospel was presented. And Pastor Michael Clover, who's my uncle on my other side, on my mom's side, said to people there, some, somehow I was, I understood what was going on. And he said, you know, I had a lot of people that came through the visiting of friends and said, man, if Brendan Coyle didn't make it to heaven, I sure won't. Because of everything that he had done. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 says that it's by grace that we've been saved through faith. Not by works, otherwise we're going to boast and brag. We're going to put it on a plaque for people to see. We're going to say, here's what I've done. If anybody can get in heaven, I can. None of that goes with us. From dust we came and dust that we're going to go. Nothing that we do is going to last. No reward that we earn on earth matters to God. The only thing that matters is, did we call on the name of Jesus to save us from our sin? Amen. What's foolishness to the world is truth to Christ. So I just want you to give praise to Christ. For forgiving me to the uttermost. For forgiving my daddy who led me to faith in Christ. He led my brother and my, my, both my brothers to Christ. He raised us to love the Lord. To love our family. To love people. If it were not for the influence of my daddy and for his parents, John Thomas and Ruby Green, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be crying to you today about God's goodness. It's because of Ruby Green and John Thomas Green that, that taught him to love the Lord. It's because of people before them that came. What Clemson said, I love it. He said, it's the middle of nowhere. That's what I thought when I came here last night at midnight. It's the middle of nowhere. At one point, this area was the unreached. 
someone came and said, the gospel needs to come here. And they came. As I came to forgive the man that killed my daddy, I was also faced with the, with the idea that maybe I need to forgive Muslims. I've never been hurt personally by a Muslim. I've never